Today I want to talk about why basically every kind of cryptocurrency is a scam. Now, well, maybe I shouldn't say scam, that's a little melodramatic. But uh, basically all cryptocurrencies, even if they have millions of dollars in their market cap, lots and lots of people investing in them, they're probably all garbage. They're not fully thought through at a very basic level. Let me explain why, okay? Now I have cryptocurrency. I have very few of them. I don't have, you know, I don't diversify because most of it is crap, but I want to explain my metric, okay? Now here's the thing about Bitcoin. Bitcoin, um, a lot of people focus on like the digital scarcity aspect of Bitcoin, okay? Because that's the point. Like, uh, you know, you have this blockchain um, and it allows you to have scarcity in a digital domain. You just can't copy and paste Bitcoins, so you can actually build a monetary system on top of it, okay? Now we can talk about the specific traits of Bitcoin, what it does right, what it does wrong in another video. That's not what I'm talking about. But here is the nice, the, the really nice thing about Bitcoin. It is a self-propelling system, okay? Um, the miners have incentive to mine and secure the network and increase the hash power. Um, and people who have the coin, of course, since there is guaranteed scarcity, they can use it for different things. It is, it, it's, it's, on one hand, it's a perfectly designed system to keep itself going. You don't need like some agency monitoring Bitcoin. In fact, the other benefit of that is because you don't have a single agency that has to monitor Bitcoin, Bitcoin also is pretty hard to regulate. I mean, you can crack down on mining, you can say it's illegal, you can say it's illegal for a company to accept Bitcoin, uh, but the protocol itself is not censorable. And you can't come for Bitcoin people, right? You can't come for, I mean, what are you going to do? Like, uh, uh, you know, go to the individual developers' houses. Maybe you could do that. But, you know, over the internet, I mean, there's not like Bitcoin Co. There's not, not like Bitcoin Inc. that you can come for and prosecute, okay? So that is one of the nice things about Bitcoin that people don't realize. It's decentralized. There's not a sim, there's not like a single company controlling it all. Now you can debate, oh, has Blockstream taken over too much? But that that's another thing. That's not necessarily a part of Bitcoin. Now here is my problem with basically every altcoin, okay? What altcoins, I mean, most of the time, they are not really, I mean, it's not about the coin. It's not even about the technology. It often is just about the company, okay? Instead of being decentralized like Bitcoin, a company says, oh, well, we need to fund ourselves. So here's what we'll do. We'll use a blockchain and we'll shoehorn it in our project for some reason. But the reason we want that, it's a solution looking for a problem. Um, and they want this solution because it allows them to have a cryptocurrency. And that is a great way for crowdfunding. Okay, so what ends up happening, well, Bitcoin is this decentralized network that doesn't have a single ruler and is self-propelling. You don't have to incentivize people to use it. Um, basically, every, uh, most all altcoins, they are really managed by a company and they're incomplete in a way. That is, while Bitcoin, you know, the, the innovation of Bitcoin is the, it's this system that you don't have to incentivize people to keep, like it has the incentives built into it. The game theoretics of it are totally uh, like thought out, okay? Miners are gonna do this, they're gonna get that. The mining rewards and transaction fees incentivize them to mine. Um, everything works. You don't really have to have some company managing things. But when you look at a lot of these uh, other projects in the cryptocurrency sphere, they're not like that. They, they have a token that sort of does something in some system that they're really just using so they can have the token and basically crowdfund because, you know, a lot of people wanna get rich. Um, but when it comes down to it, the company ends up making all the decisions. They have a massive pre-mine that they give out to people when they do stuff they want. Oh, well, we're not actually going to design a system like Bitcoin that's self-propelling. We want to propel things. We want to be in control. We're going to give you some of our pre-mine, uh, you know, our ICO. We are going to... Um, we're going to have dev taxes, you know, we're going to get money from all, every transaction and we're going to use things like that. Now, firstly, that is so ridiculous and self-serving. Like, I, I don't know, like when you see a coin that has like a pre-mine or like a dev tax, like I'm, I don't know why anyone buys them because, I mean, if you think about Bitcoin for a second, okay? What would you pay? Like, how much could you make if you could go back, you know, 10 years in time and work on Bitcoin when it was first, you know, get like be able to put $5 in Bitcoin, right? And buy, you know, tens of thousands of Bitcoins. That would be a great 
thing. Like being at a base level of a technology like that, that is so financially rewarding just in itself. So why additionally do all these other projects feel like they need if their if their thing is so good and it's going to be the next big thing why do they feel the need to have all of these uh coin offerings and you know they start with all this money and they get all these dev taxes why do they really feel like that it's because a lot of these projects they're not fully thought out like bitcoin okay they're not really self-propelling or they're unfinished. They're like, well, we still really don't know how this works, so we're gonna have to spell it out later, so we're gonna need some professional developers who work on this and that, right? So that's, that's, I guess, the big issue. Now, Bitcoin has lots of flaws, and I've talked about many of the flaws of Bitcoin um, in other videos, and I will continue to talk about them. Um, like, there are many tweaks you can make to it, um, but the nice thing about Bitcoin, actually, it's hard to make tweaks in Bitcoin because you have to do hard forks and stuff like that. That's actually not the case in all these other cryptocurrencies because they're, they have basically unfinished projects that are really just managed by a company. Okay, They throw out words like decentralized all the time. Yeah, sure, blockchains could be decentralized, but it doesn't mean what they're selling, what, it's, what, you know, what you're really... It doesn't mean the product itself is actually decentralized. So I think it's it's pretty cheap. Now, you guys know uh, I, I uh, use Monero. I'm a Monero person. And Monero is that actually preserves that, that the goodness of Bitcoin. It still has. It doesn't put on any junky stuff on top of that. So it's nice and simple. I don't like other currencies uh, or, you know, even projects that aren't supposed to be currencies. They're just supposed to be, you know, cash grab tokens on some kind of uh, network that isn't even necessary. Uh, but he, here's my here's my thought about it. Okay, when you, if you are developing a cryptocurrency project, or not even a currency project, I should should say like, you know, not if you're making a currency, just you want to use a blockchain genuinely, and you want to establish a protocol for the internet to use. The thing to remember is that you are not going to be a permanent fixture of the internet. Okay, you can't be too greedy. And I say this because there are a lot of projects out there. Uh, let's say projects that you know. I don't know. I. I wouldn't say I'm involved in, but, you know, I have a stake in, right? So everyone uh, on the Internet has a stake in, like, the Bat Project, okay? Because, you know, a lot of people who use the Brave, Brave Browser, they can give you the, the, their little fake uh, Bat Internet money. Um, so that's a good example because that is one of these projects that still has, I mean, it's still basically a centralized project. And they, are le they want to become this Internet standard, but they're, what they're really saying in that is that we want to be able to control this aspect of the Internet and, you know, get, you know, what, like 30 percent of this, to you know, of the income from this or something like that. And that's just absurd. When another project comes up that does the same thing in a decentralized way that, uh, you know, the, the people who designed it, they're, they're not doing more of a cash grab. They're not just doing it because they want to have a company make a bajillion, bajillion dollars. Um, they're going to win out. And it's actually pretty similar to the distinction between proprietary and free software. For decades, people thought that proprietary software is just the way to go. How are you going to make money? How am I going to pay my developers? Oh my goodness, it's impossible. Well, now everything, even companies who write proprietary software, are open sourcing things, okay? They're having like random people able to commit to them and, and make changes to their repositories and stuff like that. And that's because that's just the better way of developing in the first place. It, you, you will probably make less money yes but open source technology in the same way that decentralized cryptocurrency projects are much more likely to become the layer that other people are going to base things on in the internet that's just how it is why why would you take some crappy pr proprietary centralized uh crypto project and you know permanently stake your own project on that that's that's stupid why would you do that you'd rather have a project that is you know, truly self-propelling, okay? Now, one example that, uh, you know, another thing that people have a, a stake in is uh, the library project. And this is a perfect example, okay? Now, if you don't know the library project, you know, they have this site, odyssey.com, uh, that's O-D-Y-S-E-E.com, uh, which is, it's supposed to be like an, a video site where, you know, you can host videos and the, uh, the, the metadata is stored on the blockchain and it's all done through torrents. So it's supposed to be an uncensorable video site. Okay, even though the front ends like odyssey.com, they're actually censorable. But that's another story. You, you have to look into it. But the problem I have, again, with these kind of projects is they're centrally managed by one company. And you can say, oh, well, someone else could use our blockchain. But okay, your organization, the library organization or whatever, I forget exactly, you know, who does it. But, you know, they have this massive pre-coin of this, you know, coin that is supposed to be used on the network and stuff like that. So it's not really a fair comparison, you know what I mean? Um, what would be, and the other, I guess, annoying thing about projects like that is that, like, 
there are all these incentives that you need to provide for people. Like, uh, they need to have an incentive to host videos. They need to have an incentive. Of course, mining is, is not a difficult thing to do because everyone knows mining. Bitcoin figured that out, and every other project is doing it, like how you can incentivize people to uh, secure the network. But, you know, in the case of library, you know, is there really an incentive for people to host their own video site? Monetary incentive, okay? Um, th that's not really clear. No one else has done it in all of library's existence, and I don't think it would be a fair competition if it were. So what I'm trying to say is if you actually wanted a protocol that's going to work, you really have to have something that's totally decentralized. There's no CEO. There's no company. Oh, and the, uh, the me reason I brought up library in particular, you know, that I forgot while I was explaining it, is that they recently were uh, attacked by the SEC. They said, oh, well, your cryptocurrency, because you gave it out or something like that, that because it's an ICO, um, uh, that's a security. So we're going to regulate you like that. Now, if this were a truly decentralized, now I'm not, you know, victim blaming library here because I think it's, you know, total nonsense, the lawsuit. It's just unjustifiable. However, if they had made a truly decentralized network, there would be no, there would be no company to, you know, wage lawfare against. That is, that's the issue. Um, I think people in the cryptocurrency sphere, they're still making projects for their own profit. Um, they're not making projects because they, you know, they see this as the future of the internet. And you have to remember Bitcoin, I mean, Satoshi Nakamoto, he might be the world's, you know, richest trillionaire if he's not dead. Um, but, he, you know, this was ultimately, Bitcoin was ultimately a hobbyist project to be, you know, it's, it wasn't a cash grab. It was, let's create this for the internet. Okay. And that's why it worked. That's why it worked so well. And so all these other projects coming out that just want to make money, they're just centered around a personality or a, a project or a team. And they're not really, I, I don't know, like cryptocurrency is this great opportunity to have truly de a truly decentralized um, internet and just uh, like protocols to build all this stuff on. And it's like people aren't really getting the benefits from it. They're not really exploiting it in the way that they should. Maybe they, they just don't see it. Maybe they're blinded by dollar signs. Maybe they just don't think it through. They're just like, oh, well, I have a blockchain, therefore I'm decentralized. That's not enough. But I think if you do this right, uh, if it's done right, uh, there are a lot of people who can build clever incentive systems, clever tokenomics to have uh, systems that are self-propelling continue themselves and the internet can do stuff like host videos and host websites and all this kind of stuff without having some company manage it all, okay? That's, that's the point, okay? All right, that's all I have to say here.